Today we're going to talk about driver sizes. Why is that important? Well, a lot of people feel that bigger is better, deeper base, more power, moving more air. When the reality of it is, driver size is very important in speaker design and in speaker performance. For example, we cross over to our horns right around 2 kilohertz, say 1800 kilohertz for argument's sake. With that said, wavelength is important. Wavelength at 2 kilohertz is right around 6.5, six, 6 and 3 quarter inches. Why is that important? It's very important because if the wavelength is smaller than the size of the diameter of the driver, you start having phase anomalies, meaning that beaming occurs. So what's beaming? What beaming is, is rather than a wide dispersion into your room of sound that matches the horn's wide dispersion, it begins to narrow as frequency increases. So if, say, for example, at 2 kilohertz, where the crossover is, let's say for your argument's sake, the dispersion is right around here. At 4 kilohertz, it might be here, 10 kilohertz here, 20 kilohertz, which is the limit of human hearing, it might be as narrow as this with a driver, driver this size. Here's a acrylic circle showing six, and, 6 inches in diameter. As you can see, this is a 4-inch diameter driver. No problem here. It more than covers the six and a half inches or six inches it'll it'll represent all the frequencies up to two kilohertz and little little more than that actually so that's in the little hero one just like that that's the mark audio chr70 also a mark audio driver over here six inches no problem still covers the entire width it goes all the way out to two kilohertz, maybe a little bit beyond that. That's safe because our crossover is right around two kilohertz, so we don't have any beaming occurring at the crossover point. Once again, that's important because the horn at two kilohertz is presenting a pretty wide dispersion. We want these two to match the dispersion of the horn. Otherwise, when you move your head back and forth, you're missing out on some of the upper mid-range, some of the high frequencies, because the beaming, which instead of being like this in dispersion, is now like this. So you're moving out of that sweet spot. You're moving out of the zone where you can hear the upper mid-range like that. You don't want that, because that way if it's like this, and there's no beaming occurring, or very little, you're staying inside that sweet spot. Frequencies stay the same. I don't know about you, but I don't sit completely rigid looking straight forward. I might look to the left or right, read something, maybe even pick up a glass of wine, but I'm not sitting dead center all the time. So it's important. Let's move over to an 8-inch driver. This is an 8-inch driver. It's not the one we use, but it's a good representation. You're still pretty much in the safety zone. You're pretty much covering almost all the cone. There's a tiny bit of gap, but not enough to matter. That size cone is what we use and our largest speakers, the Hero 8 piece. Let's move on here to a 10-inch driver. Whoops, that's too big. It's too big to make sure we don't have beaming occur at the six inch to six and a half inch crossover point, which measures out to be 2000 Hertz. So the bottom line is, you're only going to get a dispersion from a 10-inch woofer as wide as this 6-inch piece of acrylic. It's beaming, obviously. I mean, you can see that. Let's move over to a 12. Oh, boy. That's not good. You're getting a tremendous amount of beaming here. All this cone here is too big to create a wide dispersion. It's all coming from the central part of the woofer. Well, why is that detrimental? Why not just live with that? That's fine. Not really, because when beaming occurs, you also get something called cone breakup. Cone breakup means that the center portion of the cone here is reproducing 
most of the music. That's before it beams. The part of the music that is represented by this part of the cone, the outer part here that's not involved in pistonic motion, meaning moving in and out as a unit, as you can see, a cone is supposed to do this. It starts to break up around the edges. It's trying to reproduce a higher frequency, and it physically can if these areas here begin to vibrate independently of the central part of the cone. So these are vibrating independently, um, not necessarily in unison. Sometimes maybe this one here is representing a 3 kilohertz tone, and this is representing a 4 kilohertz tone. You get interference, you get distortion. That's why it's ribbed here to try and calm that down. That doesn't always work. So you may get deep bass out of a 12. You may get pretty deep bass out of a 10. But you can't have your cake and eat it too in physics. You're either going to get deep bass and beaming and distortion around the crossover point, or you're going to get 95% deep bass, 85% here, probably I'm just guessing as to the percentage, but you're going to get the vast amount of the frequency spectrum intact without beaming, without phase aberrations, without distortion. So you have to make a compromise somewhere on the, on the deal here. So what we do is we go with a four inch driver and a little hero. That's the size people like, for example. Uh, they like it for their apartments and for late night listening. It reproduces darn near the entire musical spectrum in combination with one of our smaller horns. As we go bigger, we've got the six inch and the hero 6.5 reproduces even more bass. Still crosses over just fine at 2 kilohertz. No beaming really occurs because it's a pretty steep crossover point. It doesn't really allow it to go into the beaming zone. The 8 inch, which is this one here, this one is 8 inches as well, does just fine up to 2 kilohertz, right around 1800 kilohertz is where we switch it over to the horn. No beaming, pretty decent bass down in the 40s, perfectly fine for most music. And by the way, very little music is recorded below 50 hertz because of compression and other issues regarding vinyl recordings and things like that. But that's for another video. So the bottom line here is bigger isn't always better. The size has to fit. We've got to make sure these babies don't beam. If they do beam, you're going to miss out and you're going to get some distortion and the mid-range is going to sound right. So that's my little discussion about beaming and woofer size. And, uh, oh, by the way, I just wanted to mention, you might notice that these horns are different now. They're, they're elliptical horns from Fatal Pro. These are coming out soon in our new model of the Hero 8P. Um, so Model 2. We'll touch on that when they're ready to get out the door, but this is a little sneak preview of the Fatal Pro elliptical horns. They sound fantastic. We'll let you know when it's ready to be sold. Thank you once again from Shinzitsu Audio. Enjoy your music.